fun. Why don't you uh, take a moment just to uh, circulate a bit, say happy Christmas to everybody, say someone who's not from your family, upstairs as well if you're able to. Well, it's, uh, it's Christmas Day, and it, uh, we've been preparing for it for a little while, haven't we? And uh, maybe you have your little Christmas traditions. Uh, we did our uh, annual Christmas tradition yesterday, Anne and I, which was to wash the dog. He gets his, uh, his annual bath. So uh, Anne said, we're going to wash him before Hannah comes back, so he smells all lovely. So we washed him in uh, Christmas gingerbread uh, sort of shampoo stuff. He smells of gingerbread. And... Uh, I got a surprise this morning because Anne left early to go and collect Hannah from the airport and I thought she was going to take the dog with her because wouldn't it be cute, you know, Anne meets Hannah, the daughter, and the daughter meets dog. And uh, so I got quite surprised when I opened the door and the dog was there, which, uh, never mind, he's, uh, he didn't go to the airport, which was probably very sensible, so I had to walk him nonetheless. So we got a gingerbread flavoured or smelling dog. We've got Hannah on our way. It's Christmas Day, but it feels like something might be missing. Something or someone might be missing from our celebrations. Before we get to that, uh, obviously in the run-up to Christmas, there's been a lot of Christmas singing. We've been singing some wonderful carols. So we'd like to give the, the band a little bit of a, a thank you. I know, uh, I know that that raises the question, we've got to thank everyone. We should thank everyone in church, but it's lovely for them to come and lead us in some singing this morning. But we've been hearing... Christmas songs, haven't we, in the shops and in schools and all sorts of places for quite a while. So, how about you have a little think of what your favorite Christmas song is? Maybe it's one we sung here this morning, or last night, or yesterday, or maybe it's one that you've heard on the radio or TV. Turn to somebody beside you and share with them what your favorite Christmas song is. Is it a cheerful song? Is it a sad song? Is it an old song or a new song? What's your favorite Christmas song? Okay. Does, uh, does anyone want to, I um, don't know quite how we'll do this, but there's a few of us here, there's a few of us upstairs and stuff, but maybe you could shout out your favourite Christmas song, and I'll try and hear it. Oh, Holy Night. Okay, a few people with that one. Oh, Holy Night. We've enjoyed that one a few times in church and uh, elsewhere. Any other ones that people would like to shout out? I'll try and hear. Sorry, what did you say? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, Yes, that Christmas one. Yeah, yeah, good. Any other ones? White Christmas. White Christmas. Yeah, yeah, I think. All I want for Christmas. Anybody else got one? Perhaps upstairs. You have to shout real loud if you're upstairs. Joy to the world. Okay. You can perhaps say... Uh... I never ever think how I'm going to get responses back, do I, uh, in this church? But anyway, never mind. We'll work it out for next year. Anyway, I don't know. How many of you here like... Last Christmas by Wham. Yeah, loads of you. That's great. Uh, fantastic. I know you weren't putting your hands up because you don't want to do that. But uh, I quite like it. And we sang it, didn't we? Did we sing it uh, the other night when we were doing the Weatherspoons kind of thing? But I didn't realize until recently there's a thing going around called Whamageddon. This is a game that you can play between the 1st of December and the 24th of December, so we'll maybe try it next year if you didn't do it this year, when you have to try and avoid hearing Last Christmas by Wham. Okay, so in order to avoid it, people have to take all sorts of evasive actions. So you might have done these actions even if you were not trying to avoid Last Christmas by Wham. Has anyone here brave enough to admit that in the past few weeks during December, you've avoided shopping in supermarkets? No, I've not done that. I managed to shop in the supermarket. What about not daring to turn on the radio just in case you hear Last Christmas by Wham? Yeah, I've, I've avoided some radio stations. Uh, avoiding the pub or local cafes and restaurants in case you hear Last Christmas. 
not going to a Christmas party. I've managed to do a few of these things, actually, but that's, and that's for different reasons. Anyway, a public apology was made by a football stadium DJ. You know, if you go to the football, they're playing music beforehand. Often at Reading FC, it's something very, very sad they're playing at the moment. But uh, he thought, I know what I'll do. I'll play Last Christmas by Wham. That'll get everyone in the Christmas mood. And apparently it didn't, because 7,000 people were knocked out of the game Whamageddon in one go. Players who've been trying to avoid George Michael and Andrew Ridgely's 1984 hits for as long as possible before Christmas Eve got eliminated in one foul go. Matt, the DJ at Northampton Town, said, I didn't think people took it that seriously. I currently have had to re remove my Facebook posts, most of my social media streams. The police have said I've got to change the direction of travel and not tell people where I live. Some people perhaps taking the whole thing a bit seriously. Christmas songs, Christmas presents, which Elsie had some of us share there, Christmas food, there's lots of things to celebrate about Christmas. But sometimes it's increasingly easy to avoid the real message about Christmas. Is something or someone missing from your Christmas? Well, I've got a little list here possibly of uh, some people who have got an important role. I've had to buy presents for them in my family. Let's see if, uh, if uh, anything or anyone is missing from my list. So, I've had a call this morning from Andrew, our son, so I've bought presents for Andrew, and uh, he is awake this morning, which is concerning, because he never used to be awake when he lived with us. I think this is married life. He's up early. Uh, Amy, I've bought presents for Amy. That's uh, Amy is, Amy's not the tall one, so she must, anyway, heading along there. Amy is our new daughter-in-law. That was one of our highlights of this. Actually, it was the highlight of the year. <laughs> Moving on very quickly. Uh, we've got Hannah. I've got presents for Hannah, who's back or should be back from the USA. Anne's just picked her up. Uh, we haven't got a picture there of Finley, but I've got presents for Finley the dog, obviously. I've got to buy presents later on for my father-in-law. That's Secret Santa. Okay, so I've got presents for Andrew, for Amy, for Hannah for Finley the dog, my father-in-law, because that's my secret Santa this year. That's my Christmas present list. Or is there anyone or anything missing? I've got Andrew, my son, Amy, daughter-in-law, Hannah, daughter, Finley the dog, my father-in-law. Anyone missing from my list? Anne. Anne, yes, I'm very glad you said that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I've got Andrew and Amy, they were fairly easy to choose, got something for their house because they're in Reading. Dog, easy to choose for, loves a, loves a ball. Hannah sent me a list of things and the secret Santa was a little thing from there. So I'm missing something for Anne. I think I better pop round by one of the shops in the high street later on. I'm sure it'll be okay. Is something or someone missing from your Christmas? Adverts have for weeks been telling us that Christmas is all about the perfect meal, and some of us are going to be enjoying yummy dinners later on. Uh, mine will just take a few minutes in the microwave, should be no problem. Uh, others will tell us that the perfect Christmas is the amount of presents you get, and how many presents have we still got to unwrap later on today. Others will tell us that it's the Christmas experience of ice rinks or markets or tinsel-covered trees, and yet too often there's someone important missing. Many of us try to have Christmas without Christ. And the result may be very much like my house at the moment, more mess than mass. Is it any wonder that without Christ, we sometimes think Christmas is just magical, but not very relevant for our lives? In Luke 2, we were told that angels met the shepherds. And we had that story just there on the, uh, the screen, didn't we? And the angels said to the shepherds, today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. And to the shepherds, the shepherds went, well, shrugged their shoulders and said, let's get back to sizzling our sausages over the fire. Or some of the shepherds said, oh, we don't believe in angels, there's no such thing as angels, and they continued on with their nightly activities. Is that what happened? No, it's not what happened. So excited were they by the message that they left their sheeply duties 
and ran as fast as they could to find the Savior born in Bethlehem. It is good news, Jesus' birth, a cause for great joy. Well, I wonder, what do you plan to do with the rest of your Christmas day? Why don't you turn to somebody beside you and say, what are you planning to do with the rest of your Christmas day? Is it dinner cooking? Is it opening presents? What are you going to do? Just uh, have a little chat with someone, tell them what you're going to be up to. Okay, so um, so as soon as I stop talking, one more carol, we'll be able to crack on with it. But, okay, so uh, maybe some of us will be having lovely presents or delicious foods or watching a Christmas movie or playing games or maybe even some of us will be having a, a little snooze. Christmas Day can be so busy that it passes really, really quickly. So busy can it be that we can forget the joy of the birth of Jesus. The shepherds found that the good news about Jesus was a cause for great joy. So first thing today, let's make sure Jesus isn't missing from our celebrations. And then just one other thing, a little verse from Luke 2 as well. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So today we celebrate... But what about after? It's very easy to rush on to the next thing. Because today we celebrate that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. We remember his birth. But what do we do about this tomorrow? Do we simply pack everything away for another year? Do we go visiting relatives tomorrow? We know what we're doing today because today will be busy. But what about Jesus tomorrow? After Jesus had been born, sometime after, we don't know how long after, Magi came and offered Jesus three famous presents. Gold for a king, frankincense for worship, and myrrh to anoint for burial. There's a reminder in the presents that we give and we receive that Christmas is about receiving and giving. First, we make sure that Jesus isn't missing. We receive the good news about Jesus. And then we respond, we give. We don't just give presents to other people, but we give back to God. First, we receive the good news about Jesus. Jesus is our savior and he wants us to be his friend. And then we give. We give back to Jesus the very best that we can possibly bring. Gold for a king, frankincense for worship, myrrh to anoint for burial. So this Christmas day, Let's make sure Jesus isn't missing from our Christmas celebrations. Let's receive the joy of his arrival with good news. And then let's give back the best we can to Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Let me say a short prayer and then we'll hand back to Elsie. And now I'm going to close my hands and close my eyes and say, Dear Jesus, thank you for your birth in Bethlehem all these years ago. Thank you that like the shepherds we can receive your birth, this good news, with joy. And thank you, like the wise men, we can come to give you our best, to give you our worship. Help us to enjoy today, but also to live for you tomorrow, to receive and to give, to receive your good news and to give you our best in our worship. So Lord, bless this Christmas day and the days that follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.